First up in our list of issues is uh, our non-start. So I've whipped the seat off, which was held by one very crappy little mount at the back, so that can't be original. And then under here, we have an initial relay. And this is the one that's not passing the current. Because it clicks when you press the button on the handlebars, it's not activating the uh, main solenoid to start the starter. I'm not sure what this is, which has been cable tied onto a, an oil feed by the looks of it. Or an oil, no, sorry, an oil return, because that's got to be the filter, the in-tank filter. So that's got to be the oil return pipe pouring back into the top of the tank, I would imagine. I may be wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure what function that serves. I mean, it's connected to the relay, obviously. Power from the battery. Power to the relay. Power elsewhere, don't know. Mm. I'll have to look at the wiring diagram. But anyway, this is what's causing our issue at the minute. So, the earth wires are tight. So I'm going to remove these one at a time, clean the contacts, apply some lubricant, reattach, see what happens. So I'll bring you back when I've cleaned them. Right, everything's cleaned, lubricated. So, fingers crossed, let's give it a go. Connection's on. Let's see. No, it's not on. Oh. Okay, cancel that. Right again, but this time with the kill switch in the right position. Because it ain't going to run with it in the off position. Still nothing. Okay. Try again. Right, back again. A bit more fiddling about. And I think I found a problem. The way it's been connected to the frame has meant the earth lead goes through 90 degrees. And I think it might have broken the wires internally. So, yeah, we're getting there. So I'm going to put another earth lead on and see if that does anything. Right, back again. Um, put a temporary earth on to the relay. So with ignition on, oh for God's sake, still nothing, it's working, oh, intermittent, I thought I'd fixed it, obviously I haven't. Right, I popped the cover off the relay, which doesn't look in bad nick really, cleaned contacts, however, I then operated the switch a few times, and it worked, but there appeared to be shorting going on inside. I'm not entirely sure why. So I think I'm going to have to replace that unit. So before I do that, I need to make a note of exactly where these wires go and then take it to my local auto electricians and see what they've got as a replacement. It doesn't look in bad nick in there, but as I say, you can see it's sparking, which it shouldn't do. Let's try it again. You can see the... Uh, there, look. I don't know if you can see that. There's a whistle. 
a wisp of smoke, which it shouldn't really be, so, well, I don't think it should be anyway. So, a new relay needed. Let's have a look at this uh, banana caliper now. I'll just crack that so I can move it more easily when I get the caliper off. The caliper securing, or well, caliper half securing bolts are 12 point. And then if we move this, I was wrong about the movement in the top, there's a small amount. But it's this main pin here that's clearly suffering. I mean, that's ridiculous. So that's where our problem lies. So we're going to get this off and then see what lies beyond. Because I've never taken one of these off before. So, we shall see what we've got. I just have pre slacken these. Well, get them all a crack of half a turn each to make life easier when I came back to the camera. This bleed nipple's tiny, I can't find a spallard fit that at the minute. I'll have to look at my other workshop and see what I've got lying about because it is absolutely minute. I can't believe it's so small for a caliper of this size. I sort of expect something this size on a Ford Transit. And if what I've read about them is true, it's not even meant to be that efficient. Right, so... Yes. Right, so that comes off like that. Right. Okay, let's get this off first before I show you what I found because I'm going to have to show it on camera. We'll wait till we get it on the bench. Oh. Don't imagine there's going to be a lot of fluid in this, to be honest. But we have a container. Handy. Not a lot. Right. I'll leave that dripping away. I'll show you that in a second. So we have a pad mounting pin and a half-worn pad. I'm right about the disc, there's no great uh, amount of wear. And then we have an anti-rattle shim of some description. The inner part of the caliper, also probably with half-worn pads. on the pin, which hopefully it is, or on the fork leg, I don't know. Let's see if there's a specification for that. It's definitely not there. Right, now then. Trying not to get my head in the way. Right. 
Now, if that is one, ah, now, okay. Looks like there's a bush inside the alloy, which makes sense. So it's probably that that's worn rather than anything else. Now, let's show you this. The boot is split, but the outside of the caliper piston looks pretty good. There's a bit of rock there, and then there's this, which looks to me like it's been a pad securing pin. Like that, and it's been bashed out. Right. Let me just go and get that out of the way and I'll bring it back. Right, I was correct in my thought, that is a pad securing pin, it's come out one of these holes, which are now a little loose, but I would have thought with new pins and the caliper half bolted together, that probably won't be a problem, and we can see here some scoring on the caliper half, because it's been bouncing up and down because the bushes are worn out. So that's our problem. So bring the other half in. Can we still in focus there? I think we are. That was that pin that we saw moving about whilst it's still on the bike. So I think It's just savable, assuming I'm right with regard to the bushes in the fork legs. I really want to get this out now and see, um, although I must admit I'm not entirely sure how that comes out. So I shall come back to you in a second again once I've worked out how I'm going to get this out. All right, before I go and look at the pin, I've uh, I'll take the piston out before I leave the workshop. So I've got a uh, blowgun, some workshop paper wrapped around it to try and provide more of a seal into where the brake hose went. And then I've got a cloth wrapped around it as well to hopefully absorb the impact of the piston coming out. Assuming I can get it out. Yeah. No, nope. that ain't gonna work. Try plan B. Right, a slightly better seal this time, I hope. Try again. Not a great deal happening there. Is that moved? I don't know. Very dirty old brake fluid and all that. Right, try again. Okay. Okay, for this attempt, I've got the finger off an old inspection glove, which is hopefully more resistant to soaking. So, let's give that a go.
Nope. Right, so now I'm starting to think this is really quite seized. Okay. Let's try yet again. This time the paper has been forced in a bit more. With a small screwdriver. Hopefully that will help. Again. Oh, there we go. Sticky. Lovely. Right. Move that there. So there's our piston. Try and get a bit more light on it. Is that any brighter? I hope so. Right, well there it is. So I'm not entirely sure what its constituent parts are at the minute. Let's have a look. I don't know is the answer. Uh, I'll just go and put it through the parts washer and come back. Right, fresh from the parts washer. So someone more used to bikes have spent years in Northern Europe. That's in really good condition. There are a couple of very minor marks, but uh, Definitely, definitely reusable, nothing bad there. And then inside the caliper body, again, essentially unmarked. There are very, very minor marks there. Scuffing more than anything else. Certainly reusable. So it is now just a matter of me working out what to do about these. These pins, I'm not sure if that's in focus, let me refocus you. Yeah, hopefully it's actually back in focus. A bit, bit of paper stuck there. Yeah, about these pins. I'm going to have to find out how they come out and what I can do, if anything, to rescue them. Because there's this one, there's the top one in the uh, leg, which isn't actually that bad, minor. And then there's the two caliper pins. Anyway, a bit of research and then find a spanner to fit this, which I've got with me here. So, savable. I've done a bit of uh, investigation, trying to find out what's going on with this pin, because I couldn't work out how it comes out. And it's not a lot online really but anyway it now appears that if I grind this lip off here take the washer off push the pin out you can then get a replacement pin with a screw in insert and a couple of washers to replace this so that's what we're going to do have a look and see if we can get this out Right, I'm going to be using the air cut off tool, which you can barely see because I've got the close up lens attached. But anyway, I can't do this whilst uh, the camera is this close. So I'm going to do it off camera, bring you back when I've removed that lip so you can see what's going on because otherwise the camera is just going to get covered in uh, debris, which I don't want and can't afford. So I'll remove that and bring you back and see how it disassembles.
Right, as you can see, I've ground the lip off, so we have a loose washer now, which is destroyed. And hopefully that should come out through there. Nope. There is clearly still work to be done. I should say. There is still work to be done. That's going to be really awkward because it's very close to the uh, caliper body. I've got to have a close look at that before I go any further. Right, I've had a look at this. It's only a very, very slight amount on the edge that's stopping it coming through. So rather than risk grinding, I'm just going to tap it through. So touching the other side now. Yeah, it is. that's why it's not moving. Let me find a bigger piece of wood. Again, just tap it. I'm only hitting it very lightly. It sounds terrible on the camera because they're right next to the microphone, but these are very gentle taps. So there is our pin. Sure properly focus. Anyway, there is the pin which we will be replacing. And the hole in the caliper. Now, whether that, see that's slightly elongated. I don't know if you can see that. And then we're going to try that. Slightly elongated. Whether a new pin will take that up, I don't know. It's not horrendous, but we shall have to see. The new pin is on order through Zodiac's system. That's the first one I found online. Uh, it certainly can't be any worse than the old pin, that's for sure. So, fingers crossed. We shall see. Right, the master cylinder. The pipe outlet. I have actually got proper brake pipe spanners, but they're not here. That might have the unit, so I've pre loosened out this spanner. So it's alright, it's rusty, but it's in uh, good usable condition. There is no brake fluid in here, but I'm going to cover the tank anyway when we're ready to take it off. So I'm going to take the mirror off and then we'll go around the other side. And then we'll get it on the bench so you can see what's going on. So I'll take that off. Which I should have got the spanner for beforehand as usual. But that's me. Right, so let's clear off. And then we need to I'll bring it back in a second and actually get my life together. Right, the uh, master cylinder. Like so many in the 70s, it's part of the switch gear as well, so we're missing a screw there that we need replacing. But if we undo these three that are remaining, that should allow that to come off. Undo that and the whole lot can go onto the bench. That's the theory. Let's hope it works.
Ooh, come on. There we go. Tank's covered now, just in case. But as I say, I don't think there's any here. Uh... Now then, what have we got in there? I'm going to have to uh, turn you off a second because I'm going to need both hands and I'm going to have to come in front of you to look at that. Right, the thing that had me hesitating very slightly then, I'd turn you off, was I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to damage these connections, which are fortunately just push fit into the uh, brake light switch, which is housed in there, which I couldn't see properly, which is why I had to get the extra time. So, I'm just going to unscrew the uh, brake pipe connection on the end of the master cylinder, which you saw earlier, which is over here. So it's still attached at the minute, which is over here. And then the next time you see it, it'll be on the bench. Right, we're on the bench, as you can see. We have two screws holding the master cylinder top, which I have cracked just before you arrived. And inside, absolutely nothing but crud. Okay, on the underside, let me just refocus you because uh, as we're in close up mode, it tends to uh, come and go. We have the underside of the unit, which has got a clip here holding on, oh, very wobbly clip, and a dirty clip. Now that should just push up. I'll be replacing it anyway, so I'm going to be brutal, there's no point faffing about. It will be getting changed. No, doesn't want to spin round. Let me just see if I can get under that. There we go. Let's bend it off. As I say, I'll be replacing it anyway, as a matter of course. You would imagine it'd spin round easily in that cavity, but it didn't want to, so. Right, and then that pin. Oh, which is stiff. That's just muck and old crap, really. It's not badly scored, a bit of mark there, but nothing horrendous. I'm sure that will be getting used again. So let's have a look in here. That should just come out, but it doesn't want to. Can you still see? There we go. camera again because the lighting's not brilliant on such small items. Right, it's quite hard lighting cavities I'm afraid. But I think you probably see that as a pin. It has a shoulder and a spring and a washer. The end of the pin is curved to fit in the end of the piston in the Master cylinder, I assume. We shall find out. And then there is, you might have to just believe me on this, a felt seal. Can you still see that? Felt seal. Yeah. And then a metal washer. And then the next bit I'm going to really struggle getting you to see because it's really deep inside there. Right down in there, 
I really don't know how I'm going to show you this. Let, oh, hang on. Can you see that? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry for this. It's, it's very difficult to light this. And then in there, where the end of the screwdriver is touching now, is a circlip into which, or I should say behind which, sits the main piston and seals. So I'm going to have to turn you off and pull it out because there's absolutely no way you're going to be able to see me do that. I'll bring you back when and if I manage to get the damn thing out. So, see you shortly. Right, the circlip is out. Now, it was, I don't know if you can see that, but it's corroded there and it was stuck in the groove and I couldn't get my circlip pliers with enough crank to get in. So I had to use that to leave a one side out and then yank it out. Uh, again, obviously the circlip will be getting replaced. Um, had it moved round, it wouldn't have been a problem. But it didn't and it wouldn't. So sometimes you have to be uh, less than subtle. Anyway, it's out. It will be getting replaced, obviously, as part of the rebuild kit. And out popped the piston, which is quite good. There it is, really cruddy, horrible, mucky, not a lot to it. Let's see what else is hiding inside there. Right, after the piston came a seal, which has to be picked out, and then there's a metal cup. But then the rest of it is stuck inside the, the body still. I tried blowing. Let me see if you let me see if I move that so you can actually see it. Don't think you're going to be able to it. try and it might be slightly out of focus. Apologies if it is. But you just see it poking in there as a spring, and there'll be another seal behind that, um, which I'm going to have to try and pick out somehow. Nope, I've lied to you. I thought there'd be another seal behind that, there isn't. Just one very cruddy spring. So, I'm now going to go and clean this body out and check the bore. All these, I'm assuming, will come in the new kit, but nothing's going to get thrown away until then anyway, so it shall go into a plastic bag. And then, uh, can you see that? I'll see what happens. Let me just uh, refocus you. I'm sorry about this, but as I said, the macro lens is very sensitive for focus. Yeah, as I say, it's got a very, very shallow depth of field. So unless you refocus constantly, you end up losing stuff. Right, OK. That's the brake light switch. I'll be checking to make sure that works. I'll put a bulb on it, a 12 volt feed, and just check it lights up. Uh, if not, that will need replacing as well. So I'm going to go and clean this off and then we'll see if I can look down inside the ball with you. But again, I say lighting is going to be a problem, but we'll give it a go. Right, cleaned out. The reservoir has got some very minor pips in it. You've got also a little bleed return hole, which is tiny right in there which was blocked and is now clear. That will be a main feed hole into your master cylinder, I'm sure. And then, again, I don't think you're going to be able to see any of this properly, but the actual bore of the cylinder is in remarkably good condition. Very clean, smooth, no pitting, no gouging. Uh, so, an ideal candidate for rebuilding. So I'll test the switch. The rebuild kit is ordered. I will repaint it, obviously, or I'll put it together. And then, Bob's your uncle. Just one final bit I forgot to show you. Is the... Uh, when I took the cap off, that 
is the remains of the rubber seal, which makes me think, looking at it, that it's had the wrong brake fluid in it sometime. Because that's really just goo. Um, normally they shrivel up, they tend to go a bit hard sometimes, but that's just appalling. So I can only assume it had the wrong brake fluid in it, I don't know. Anyway, even if it had, it doesn't matter because all the seals will be getting changed. Pistons, everything. So it will be like a new cylinder.